Hi, you're listening to Redneck Theology, a short program providing a common sense look at Christianity. I'm your host, Bill Witte. Questions or comments may be emailed to redneckTheology at gmail.com. Now, on with the broadcast. Do as I say, not as I do. Undoubtedly, many of us remember hearing that as we grew up. I sure do. My parents weren't bad people. They were just average, normal, honest, hard-working folks. They made mistakes just like anyone else. They tried to teach me to learn from my mistakes and from theirs. My dad had one noticeable bad habit. He was a cigar smoker. He either had a cigar in his mouth or in a nearby ashtray all the time. Sometimes it wasn't lit. Sometimes he'd just keep it in his mouth. Naturally, I never gave much thought to the subject of whether smoking was good or bad. It seemed like the grown-up thing to do. The problem was that by the time I got curious about it, I'd already heard repeatedly how I shouldn't ever start. I was told it was expensive and hard to stop once started. And those are basically the major arguments during that time period. And I was plainly told I'd better never start smoking. As I got older, like many boys of my time, I had the urge to try smoking. I asked my dad why I shouldn't smoke since it was okay for him. It just didn't make sense to me to hear that phrase, do as I say, not as I do. You probably have several examples from your own life of hearing the phrase and feeling equally puzzled. Many who don't go to church might wonder if those words should be the the mantra for Christians. In 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and verse 1, the Apostle Paul said it uh, actually kind of the other way around. He said to follow him as he followed Christ. Be you followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? It seems wherever we look, we see examples of people who say they are Christians behaving in a manner contrary to the Word of God. Even Christians use the philosophy others should ignore their actions and just do as they say when questioned about their actions by other Christians. It seems we want good examples to follow. We want flesh and blood patterns to follow, while forgetting someone may be looking to us as their pattern. We may be the best, best example, rather, of a, a living, breathing Christian that someone else ever sees. We know our own failings and faults. We know we don't always do things the way God would prefer. When we fall short, we are to confess our sin, turn away from it, and keep on going. When we know someone else sees our failure, with all sincerity, we can urge them to do better. We truly want them to follow the teachings they've heard us share from the Bible and not fail as they may have witnessed us do from time to time. Encouraging others to succeed where we fail means first we must admit our failing. The Bible says in James, the fifth chapter, in verse 16, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. One application of this verse means to admit when we are wrong and ask others to pray when we are wrong, that we do not repeat the wrong. When the Apostle Paul encouraged others to follow his example, he qualified his direction by saying to be followers of Christ as he was. He did not claim perfection. He made mistakes. He wanted the early Christians to observe him as he followed the teachings of Christ and as he confronted his own mistakes in order to correct them and not repeat them. Undoubtedly, someone decided to discontinue following Paul's teachings when they saw him do something they objected to. Regardless what shortcomings Paul may have had, he went on to become one of the most well-known of all of Christ's disciples. When a well-known pastor admits to having an affair, many may leave the church. Some may turn away from Christianity altogether, citing his poor example. Does it mean the truth he preached now becomes lie? Do the people he married suddenly become single? Of course not. His reputation suffers damage. He causes Christianity to look bad. He puts a a black mark upon all Christians. But the scripture remains true. 
those he pastored have the option to follow the scripture or follow the sin. We don't have to do wrong because someone we admired or looked up to did wrong. People seem to instinctively know this. Children seem to state at some point the reason for a behavior or desire rests with their friends. Well, everyone's doing it, or (laughs) everyone has one. And for almost as long as bridges have existed, parents have asked, well, if all your friends jumped off the the fill-in-the-blank with your local bridge name, would you jump off too? Much of the same logic applies to Christianity. Just because several Christians start approving of a sin doesn't mean it suddenly becomes right. I've done several things I'm not proud of. I want you to follow my example and teachings that point to godly living. I don't want any of you to repeat the wrongs that I've done. I would point out if you've committed sins like I have or other sins, I would desire you to follow my example in confessing it, turning from it, and committing your life to God again. He'll give you a fresh start. Don't let the devil trick you into accepting hell as your final destination because of the sins of somebody else. Don't let him convince you if you have sinned that your fate is sealed. He may point out how you live better than many Christians you know. Just think, if you're living closer to the directions given in Scripture without being a Christian, just think how great an example you could be to all of us once you became a Christian. Do you see Christians doing it wrong? Show them how to do it right. If, however, your only reason for becoming a Christian would be to show others the right way, I actually would advise you to wait. I know that sounds strange, but since the first step in becoming a Christian means committing your life to Jesus, you can't reject the biblical formula for becoming a Christian and somehow expect to demonstrate the proper Christian life. Otherwise, you can't become a Christian mainly for the reason of correcting other people and become a good example of what Christianity should be. It takes no special talent to point out how wrong people are. It does take guts, though, to commit to consistently follow Christ. What God expects is to do your best and to do your best to sell out to him completely. He knows we may fail at times. He made provision for that. The Bible was written that we could know how to live, but if we mess up, it says in the first epistle of John, second chapter and verse one, my little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. If you are ready to commit your life to God, he will help you live up to the commitment. If you're ready, you can pray along with me, as long as you mean these words from your heart. Just repeat, Dear God, I admit I have sinned. I am sorry for my sins. I'm asking you now to please forgive me for all of my sins give me a blanket coverage I believe Jesus died for my sins I now accept Jesus as my Savior and Lord I now commit my life to you and turn from sin now take a moment to thank God thank him for saving you just now tell others you just became a Christian If they want to become one too, you can lead them in a prayer similar to what you just prayed. And I'd love to hear from you also if you prayed this prayer with me. I'll give you my email in just a moment. Start reading the Bible. Ask God to help you understand it before you start reading. After all, he's the author. Who's better to explain it? I'd suggest to you to start with the book of John. Getting into a Bible-based church will help you too. Jesus tells us to do the things he did. And when it comes to following Jesus' example, you'll never, ever hear him saying, Do as I say, not as I do.
That's our program for today. I'm Bill Witte, thanking you for listening to Redneck Theology. Your questions or comments may be emailed to redneck-theology at gmail.com. Please join me again next time for more Redneck Theology.